Hello students, Miss Swanson here, and today we're going to look at how to draw array diagrams of converging lenses. This picture here just shows the sort of diagram that we'll be drawing. So we have a couple learning goals today. You should be able to draw array diagrams for converging lenses, and you should be able to describe images produced by converging lenses. So, um, just like what we saw with the concave mirrors, there are a different set of rules depending on the location of the original object. So we have five different locations that we talk about and we'll have different rules for, for several groupings of these. So one of the locations is beyond 2f prime, so that means further from the mirror than 2f prime, at 2f prime, between 2f prime and f prime, at f prime and between f prime and the lens. So those are the five locations that we'll talk about. The first three, so object beyond 2f prime, like in this picture here, at 2f prime or between f prime and 2f prime, those three all have the exact same rules. So we're going to group them together and I'm just going to do one example that covers all three. Now if you have an example in your worksheet that covers a different one, you'll still be using these exact same rules. So what we'll be doing, just like what you saw with the mirrors, it's really hard for me to draw on the tablet to get correct angles and have nice straight lines, so I'm going to be using an animation to show you what I would be drawing, um, and you'll follow along in your notes the drawing the way that the animation shows. So our first rule is that if we have an incident uh, light ray that's parallel to the principal axis and we're going to draw our arrow head on there to show that it's moving towards the lens so parallel to the principal axis it will refract through the focus so it will go through F and again we put another arrow head on there to show that the light is moving in that direction through F so that's our first rule our second rule is that if we have a light ray that's moving through the optical center, it will continue on in the exact same direction. So it won't refract, it'll just move through in a straight line. So those are our two rules that we'll be using for these three situations. Now since we started drawing our light rays at the top of the balloon, that means where the light rays cross, which in this picture is between F and 2F, where they cross will also be the top of the balloon because where the light ray started is the top so where they cross will also be the top so we can draw our picture like this now the string of the balloon went straight down to the principal axis which means the string of the balloon of our image will go straight to the principal axis now it's upside down this time but it will go straight to the principal axis it doesn't go straight down it moves towards the principal axis because the original object had the string moving towards the principal axis so this is what our final image would look like now if we're describing it for the size it's smaller Attitude is inverted because they're facing in different directions. The location is between F and 2F, and the type is real. It's real because it's on the other side of the lens, and because lenses are transparent, light can actually move through the lens, so if it ends up on the opposite side of the lens from the original object, that is real. If it was on the same side, then that would be virtual because light doesn't bounce off of the lens and come back like it would with a mirror. So that would be a virtual image. If it's on the opposite side, then it will be a real image. So let's take, oh, and sorry, these um, characteristics vary depending on which of those three locations written at the top. Depending on which of those locations your object is at, you'll have slightly different characteristics here. These are the rules that I just explained. I'm not going to read through them, but if you'd like, you can pause the video and write them down for your notes. So let's take a look at the example when the object is at F prime. So in this case, our first rule will be that an incident light ray traveling parallel to the principal axis will refract through F. So this is the same as the first rule that we saw last time. And again, drawing the arrowheads on there. The second rule, an incident parallel light ray traveling through the optical center will continue on in the same direction. So again, the same rule that we saw last time. What's different about this situation than the last one is that if we look at our refracted rays, they are parallel to each other, which means they will never cross. Now, we know where the top of the balloon will be based on where they cross, but if they never cross, that means there will never be an image. So if we look at the characteristics, the characteristics are that there is no image, so we can't describe it. 
any time the original object is located at f prime, there will never be an image. So this is always the case when it's at f prime. And here again are the care. Or sorry, these are the descriptions of our light rays. I'm not going to read through them, but pause the video if you'd like to copy them into your notes. And then finally, let's see what happens when the object is between f prime and the lens. So our first light ray will be parallel to the principal axis and it will refract through f. Our second will move through the optical center and continue on in a straight line. So again, the same two rules that we saw last time. The difference here is that if we look at our refracted rays, they're actually traveling away from each other. If they're traveling away from each other, they won't cross on that side of the lens. However, if we backtrack those uh, refracted rays to the original first side of the lens, we'll see that they do cross. So if they're traveling away from each other, we need to back up those rays. So this is how it would look. The orange one traveling backwards to the original side of the lens, and same with the red line there. And now we can see that those two will cross on the other side of the lens. And where they cross, that's the tip of the balloon. So we'll draw the balloon. Again, with our original object, the string went straight down to the principal axis. So in our image, the string will go straight down to the principal axis. And we'll have an image that looks like this on the same side of the lens as the original object. So if we're describing this, it's larger. It is upright because they're both facing the same direction. It's beyond 2f prime. And this type is virtual because it's on the same side of the lens as the original object. And here are those rules if you'd like to copy them down in your notebook. So let's take another look at our learning goals. You should be able to draw ray diagrams for converging lenses, and you should be able to describe images produced by converging lenses. If you can do these things, fantastic. If not, please re-watch the video, and if you're still having trouble, come ask me in class tomorrow. Alright, that's all for now. Bye-bye.